On August 2nd, 1571, in Famagusta, the last Christian stronghold on Cyprus, Venetian commanders Marc Antonio Bragadin and Astore Baglioni surrendered to Ottoman commander Lala Mustafa Pasha. After a brutal siege, the heavily outnumbered Christian defenders, fewer than 10,000, faced an overwhelming Ottoman force of more than 100,000. Despite their fierce resistance, they suffered catastrophic losses with nearly 90% of their forces perishing. Bragadine and Baglioni had been promised honorable terms for their surrender, ensuring the safety and dignity of the survivors. However, when they entered Mustafa's tent, they were deceived and taken prisoner. Baglioni was immediately executed by beheading, while Bragadin faced a much more horrific fate. Lala Mustafa personally disfigured Bragadin by cutting off his right ear. His officers followed by severing Bragadin's other ear and nose. The torture continued for days. Bragadin was imprisoned in a cage under the harsh sun, deprived of food and water. On the fourth day, he was offered his freedom if he converted to Islam, but he refused. His refusal sealed his fate. Historian Roberto de Marte recounts the gruesome details of Bragadin's final days. On August 17th, he was tied to his own ship's mast and whipped over 100 times. Later, he was forced to carry a heavy load of stones and sand through the streets of Famagusta until he collapsed. His final torment came when he was chained in the city square and slowly flayed alive by a Genoese traitor. Even as his skin was peeled away, Bragadin recited prayers until his strength gave out. His body was then quartered and his flayed skin was grotesquely stuffed with straw and displayed in a parade through Famagusta before being shipped to Constantinople as a grisly trophy. Bragadin's brutal execution outraged Christians across Europe. When news of the massacre reached Pope Pius V, the Pope intensified his prayers and fasting. Already deeply concerned by the Ottoman threat, Pius V was spurred into action, determined to defend Christendom from further conquests. Pius V had assumed the papacy only a year earlier, following the siege of Malta in 1565, when the Knights of Malta had successfully defended Europe from a similar Ottoman invasion. The Pope understood the gravity of the situation. Christians had suffered centuries of losses against Muslim forces and the Ottomans had dominated the Mediterranean for decades under Suleiman the Magnificent. Recognizing the need for a united Christian front, Pius V launched a diplomatic campaign to assemble a coalition to counter the Ottoman threat. Although not all European leaders supported him, such as Francis Charles IX, the Pope managed to gather an alliance known as the Holy League. This alliance included the Spanish Empire, the Papal States, Venice, Genoa, Tuscany, and the Knights of Malta, led by commanders like Marcantonio Colonna and Don Juan of Austria. The decisive battle between the Holy League and the Ottoman forces took place at dawn on October 7th, 1571, at the Gulf of Patras. Over 100,000 men and hundreds of ships clashed in what became a brutal naval engagement. The Ottoman fleet, commanded by Ali Pasha aboard his flagship Sultana, formed a crescent-shaped line, their sails bearing the name of Allah embroidered in gold thousands of times. In contrast, Don Juan wore a relic of the true cross around his neck given to him by Pope Pius V. Before the battle, the Christian fleet attended Mass and received absolution and recited the rosary on their knees. The Pope had assigned Capuchin priests to the papal ships, Jesuits to the Spanish, and Franciscans and Dominicans to the other vessels. This battle, however, was not just a military confrontation, it was a spiritual struggle as well. The Holy League gained the upper hand thanks to a sudden, miraculous shift in the wind. After five hours of intense fighting, the Ottomans were defeated. The sea was littered with debris and bodies, stained red with blood, as thousands of Christian slaves held by the Ottomans were liberated. Historian Roberto de Matte highlights the significance of the victory at Lepanto, which marked the beginning of the Ottoman Empire's decline. With the Christian victories at Lepanto in 1571 and the siege of Malta in 1565, Europe was saved from further Ottoman expansion. Without these victories, regions like Calabria and Sicily would have likely faced devastation, and Rome itself could have been the next target. 
The victory was celebrated across Europe. Pope Pius V credited the victory to divine intervention and the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary under the title of Our Lady of Victory, later changed to Our Lady of the Rosary by Pope Gregory XIII in 1573. The victory at Lepanto marked a turning point in history and Pius V, who passed away only six months later, lived to see Europe spared from Ottoman domination. His efforts and prayers were pivotal in protecting Christendom and the world today might look very different if not for the events of Lepanto 450 years ago. Understanding the immense disadvantage faced by the Christian forces, Pope St. Pius V called upon all of Europe to unite in prayer, specifically asking for the rosary to be recited for victory. The outcome, which we now know to have been a resounding triumph, thwarted the planned Islamic invasion of Europe and clearly demonstrated the intervention of God through the intercession of Our Lady. Remarkably, at the very moment of victory, Pope Pius V, though far away in Rome, is said to have risen from a meeting, moved to a window, and proclaimed with divine certainty, the Christian fleet has triumphed, his eyes filled with tears of gratitude to God for the miraculous victory. One lesser known aspect of this historic event is the role played by Andrea Doria, one of the three admirals commanding the Christian forces. Doria carried with him a small image of Our Lady of Guadalupe from Mexico into battle on the mast of his ship. Today, that very image is enshrined in the church of San Stefano in Aveto, Italy. Equally fascinating is the warship lantern housed at the monastery of Our Lady of Guadalupe in Spain, a relic captured from the defeated Muslim fleet. In Rome, the Church of Santa Maria in Aracoeli displays golden decorations once taken from Turkish galleys. Venice's Doge's Palace proudly showcases an enormous Islamic flag, a trophy from a Turkish ship captured during the victory. Until 1965, yet another flag from the battle could be seen near the tomb of Pope St. Pius V at St. Mary Major Basilica in Rome, before it was returned to Istanbul as a gesture of goodwill. The victory at Lepanto is often attributed to the power of Our Lady's intercession through the Holy Rosary. Despite their superior numbers, the Turks were no match for the faithful Christians whose devotion helped turn the tide. Blessed Padre Pio, a fervent advocate of the Rosary, once famously said, the Rosary is the weapon and indeed at Lepanto, it proved to be so. In 1716, Pope Clement XI, who canonized Pius V in 1712, extended the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary throughout the Universal Church. The significance of the title Our Lady of Victory remains strong, reminding the faithful of the powerful intercession of the Blessed Virgin. At Fatima, Our Lady once again called for the daily recitation of the Rosary, presenting it as heaven's plan for peace. Through the Rosary, she promised conversions, the conversion of sinners, the conversion of Russia, and perhaps even the eventual conversion of Islam. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us.